In this video today, I'm going to teach you all about the research onion. If you are doing a research project, a dissertation, a thesis, then the research onion can be really helpful in helping you to frame your research methodology and making sure that you cover all the necessary parts in adequate depth. However, there are lots of sources on the internet that teach you about the research onion and they make it sound so complicated. So in this video today, I'm going to explain it in a super simple way for you so that you will understand what it's all about. If you are new here, my name is Dr. Hayley Stainton. I've been conducting my own research for many years and supervising hundreds of students to do theirs too. And now I am sharing that knowledge with all of you on YouTube. The research onion was developed by Saunders et al in 2007 to describe the stages through which a researcher must pass when developing an effective methodology. There are different layers to the research onion. The premise being that you start from the outside and you peel each layer away until you reach the core. These layers are broken up into six main areas. Research philosophy, research approach, research strategy, research choices, time horizons, techniques and procedures. And I'm going to tell you what each of those mean. Research philosophy refers to the set of beliefs concerning the nature of the reality being investigated. It's generally examined in terms of ontology and epistemology. Okay, that does sound complicated, but I promise you it's not. Keep watching. To put it simply, epistemology is basically what constitutes valid knowledge and how can we obtain it. Ontology is what constitutes reality and how can we understand its existence. There are two main positions considered here, known as positivism and interpretivism. This underpins the qualitative versus quantitative debate, often referred to as the scientist versus detective debate. Now I won't go into any more detail right now about that, but what I suggest you do is once you have established whether you're using qualitative or quantitative research, you can then work backwards and you can work out whether that is interpretivist or positivist, and therefore the epistemology and the ontology that is associated with that. The next layer of the onion is referring to the approach that the researcher takes, which can be largely described as either inductive or deductive. The deductive approach starts small and gets bigger. So you will start with a specific hypothesis or hypotheses that have been developed based on information or patterns that have been observed by the researcher. It then seeks to test this hypothesis and develop a broader theory from it. The inductive approach is the opposite. It starts with a broad theory and then it focuses later on the smaller, more specific details. This is sometimes referred to as a move from the general to the specific. Typically, a deductive approach is associated with quantitative research and an inductive approach is associated with qualitative research. You will need to have good references from research methods books and I will put the links to those down in the description. The strategy layer of the research onion refers to how the researcher intends to carry out the work. So in other words, what method of data collection will be used? Will it be qualitative, quantitative, or maybe a mixed method approach? The choices outlined in the research onion include the mono method, the mixed method, and the multi method. The mono method involves using one research approach for the study. The mixed method requires the use of two or more methods of research and usually requires the use of both qualitative and quantitative. In the multi method, a wider selection of methods is used. So of course you can use one method, two methods, three methods, more. You just need to decide what works best for you and your project. The 
The time horizon refers to the time frame within which the project is intended for completion. According to the research onion, there are two types of time horizons, cross-sectional and longitudinal. The cross-sectional time horizon is when there is a pre-set time established for the collection of data. In other words, there's a deadline to work to. A longitudinal time horizon refers to the collection of data repeatedly over an extended period of time. For example, you could do a survey every year or every 10 years when a person reaches a different age or every summer. The final layer of the research onion is techniques and procedures. This is the section where you should make it explicit exactly how and why you are undertaking the research. This can be referring to primary data, the data collected first-hand by you for the research project, or secondary data, so data that was collected by somebody else and has since been published. You will need to make your research design clear with valid justifications for each stage. This provides a framework that includes the considerations that led to the appropriate methodology being chosen, the way in which the respondents were selected, and how exactly the data will be analysed. You will also cover research samples in this inner layer of the research onion. A sample is a representative segment of a larger population. We can't interview everybody, for example, so you will sample a few people. You will need to explain who was selected and why, supported by sampling theory, which you will find in most research methods textbooks. Some great ones, again, I have put down in the comments. The reader will also want to know about your sample size. Lastly, in this layer of the research onion, it is worthwhile to address the ethics of research. This demonstrates that you have been an ethical researcher and that you comply with any regulations that may be set upon you by your university. So there we have it. That's the research onion and all of the layers in the research onion. Now I don't expect you, if you are a beginner researcher, to understand everything I said there, but what you do now have is a framework for writing your research project. So work your way through all of those different stages in that order, fill your methodology chapter, making sure that you read up using the relevant literature for each section, and you will be on your way to success for your research project. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you have found this video helpful, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up.